Hi, it's Darren and Christina at the Multifamily Conference in Toronto. We've set up a podcast booth right here at the Multi-Conference, and we're going to go talk to real estate experts to help educate us more on the benefits of real estate. You ready to go, Christina? I'm super excited to be here at the Multifamily Conference, talking to a lot of wonderful people. I've met so many great people. I want to share what we talked about with everybody here. But before we jump into it, I want to remind you, if you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, make sure that you subscribe and leave that five-star review. If you're listening or watching on YouTube, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell button so you always know when new content is coming out. And don't forget to follow us on social media at Control and Compound on Instagram and TikTok. We've got some really great reels that are going to be coming out from this conference as well. All right, let's bring in the first mystery guest. Hi, Christina Wyatt here from Control and Compound. I am super excited to be at the Multifamily Conference in Toronto. I am here with Mark Gitaco and his taco hat. Hey, Mark, hey. how's it going? Great, great. Can you tell us what you're doing here at the multifamily conference? I mean, I'm going viral, I think. I I think wearing my taco hat. I mean, I talk about investing uh, from real estate perspective. Like most of the stuff that I talk about is the renovations because I find it's such a huge gap that is missing in the industry. Nobody talks about the renos, but everybody loses money on the renos. So I really focus on that piece of the pie. I'm a general contractor by trade and I've, I've scaled my business up pretty successfully. I used to do the tiles and now we manage lots of guys that do multiple units for us, about 10 to 20 units a month for investors. And I just educate people on the reno piece, like how to vet contractors, how to make quotes apples to apples, because that's the create, like every contractor quote is like all over the place, yes. makes no nonsense, makes no sense. And I'm also with Cabinets to Kitchens, which is a material supply company. And part of my education for investors is take the material away from the contractor in the bidding process. So then they can only bid on the labor, which will make it so much easier and simplify your process on which contractor you hire if you can control the material. And the other cool thing about that is you can also know what paint it is, what floor you bought and like where you got the stuff from because later on you hold these things forever. So later on when you need to do a repair or maintenance, you know where to get the stuff and you're not reliant on the contractor that may or may not exist anymore. Absolutely. No, that's great. And you've got your booth here for your company that helps supply that for the contractors and all that. You've got your podcast, uh, Talk About Investing, right? Yes. That's where you supply yeah. all the education. Um, you're real, are you a real estate investor yourself? Yes, I am. Yeah, I, I own a couple of properties. We're working on an eight unit building right now that we have just in the studs and framing phase and we're doing all of the MLI Select stuff. And it's oh, really cool. nice to do my own projects with our own team because we can like prioritize how we do things and really blast through these projects. Oh, that's amazing. And if you had one tip that you could give a real estate investor or a new real estate investor that's attending the conference today, what would you tell them? I would say, honestly, go out there and educate yourself on what it is about real estate investing that you need. Real estate investing is such a big bucket and everybody treats it like it's a tiny bucket. But like if you're doing flips or you're doing wholesaling or you want to, you know, be a passive investor or a lender, like there's so many pieces, like learn a bunch of the pieces and figure out which one kind of suits what you want and you need instead of just jumping into a coach or jumping into a program that may not be suited for you. I know a lot of people that joined um, some of these programs to learn how to invest in real estate and then they're wholesalers and they make a killing on wholesaling. But if they spent that time to learn the industry and then they would have spent the money on a wholesaling course and could have had way more education and gotten more value out of it. No, you're absolutely right. We always say the number one investment is in you. So even just being here today at the multifamily conference, tons of uh, tons of exhibitors, tons of people speaking up on the big stage, um, tons of education. So just happy to be here. And thanks for uh, chatting with us today, Mark. No problem. Anytime. I, I love to chat with you guys and check out their podcast. It's number one. Hey everyone, Christina White here with Control and Compound. We are live at the Multifamily Conference. It is a very exciting time here, lots of people. Um, and I have Adrian Benozo. He is our neighbor at our booth. And we're gonna have a little bit of chat, a little chat about what you do. So what brings you here to the Multifamily Conference? Yeah, thanks Christina. So yeah, we are a joint venture partnership company. We uh, partner with investors and we Uh, I guess layman's terms, we buy apartment buildings with our joint venture partners uh, throughout the GTA. Awesome. So perfect fit for multifamily. Perfect fit for multifamily. Yeah. So we've been in the game about 14 years now and um, we've raised a bunch of capital and we use that capital to buy buildings and um, 
buy more buildings and refinance buildings and buy more buildings. So yeah, it's gone well and give you a little tidbit of information. I used to be a police officer. Oh, cool. For 21 years. And uh, real estate investing completely changed my life. Um, I uh, completed 21 years and all the while I was uh, investing in real estate myself. And uh, those investments went well, which allowed me to retire early from police. And I started these group of companies and continued to invest in real estate full time. Okay. But it completely changed my life, um, oh, that's essentially, amazing. from being a, a government employee to uh, essentially doing business for myself and my family. Do you ever miss it? I miss the guys. Yeah. I miss the guys. Uh, some fun parts on the job I miss. But I don't miss all the paperwork. No. I don't miss the shift work. I don't miss the court. The time uh, freedom that you have with real estate investing. Yes. Time freedom. Yeah. I don't miss having to be on roll call at you know, such and such a time. And if you're late, God forbid you're late for roll call. Oh. Uh, you get, your, get into a lot of trouble. But yeah, I, I miss the camaraderie and the brotherhood of uh, the police department. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. But it's, so you are a full-time real estate investor, full but time. also helping other real estate investors get into real estate investing, yeah. right? Where we have the knowledge, we have the team, we have the property management, we have the acquisition side, we have the construction company. So essentially like Costco, right. everything so under one, one roof, shop. one-stop shop. So a newer investor could come and chat with you if they were kind of new to the game, or are you more so Yeah, newer investors that you know maybe want to partner with somebody who has all those verticals and the experience to succeed Yeah, is where we, uh, we excel at. Awesome. So if you had to give a new real estate investor one tip, the best tip, what would it be? Um, get in the game. Get in the game with, uh, with somebody who knows what they're doing, at least for your first project. Yep. And if you're confident enough to do it on your own, then just get in the game because you know what they say, it's not necessarily timing the market, it's time in the market. Yep. Absolutely. That the longer, you know, historically, the longer you leave your money in real estate, yeah, there'll be some ups and downs with the market like we were experiencing, but historically, it'll always come back, and the longer your money's in real estate, you can't lose. Everybody always needs a place to live, right? Like, it's pretty, it's yeah, pretty solid Yeah, so there. <laughs> overall, um, yeah, it's been a great, uh, it's changed my life. It's been great. We now have a big team with us, and... Uh, like I said, we have everything covered off in one one roof. And uh, investors like that peace of mind that they just deal with me and my team as opposed to me saying, oh, well, I don't know what happened there. Let me call so-and-so or like a subcontractor or this or that. We don't have that. Yeah, I always say it's important to work with someone that specializes in what you want to do what you're doing. and get that mentor and learn because, yeah, yeah learning, investing in your education is always going to be the best thing for you. 100%. Awesome. Well, thank you for stopping yeah, by. Yeah, thanks for and, having uh, me. Yeah, no, great. And We're I, uh, neighbors for the next, uh, next couple days. 24 hours. Exactly. So yeah. if you're at the multifamily conference, stop by and uh, see us. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, it's Darren Mitchell at the Multifamily Conference in Toronto, and I'm joined with good friend Kyle Ford of Kyle Ford Mortgages. I got a, did I get it right? Kyle Ford Mortgages? Kyle Ford Mortgages and Cap Got Mortgage Trust. Oh, excellent. Ky Kyle's been uh, been on the podcast before. Check out, check out that episode if you didn't. How are you enjoying the conference today? Loving it. Loving it. Seen uh, a lot of great new f uh, familiar faces, new faces, and great friends. So oh, it's been awesome, awesome so far. So, so, Kyle, last time we met, you were talking about uh, the, the, the different uh, mortgage, uh, what are they, sorry, mortgage trusts? Yep. Mortgage trust. And the, can you just kind of explain the three different levels you have and, and what's the financial backing for those from a security standpoint? Yeah, so we have three different levels of our trust. So, first of all, uh, and they're based on targeted returns. So, share class A is an 8% target. Uh, that is first position mortgages only. Share class B is an 11% target. That's first and second position mortgages. And share class C is uh, uh, construction financing or mezzanine financing, yep. which is a targeted return of 14%. So essentially, share class C is financing the difference between as is and as complete appraisals. Gotcha. The fundamental key element of our fund is we only do secured lending. So we are always a registered mortgage position on the property. Our targeted lending area is southwestern Ontario, 
so kind of the uh, Windsor to Kingston, Muskoka to Niagara region. And uh, we uh, have a, a, our fund has been existed for a little, been in existence for a little bit over a year. Our combined trustees have uh, over 100 years of real estate experience, uh, and we have a significant experience in secured lending. So, so walk walk me through like uh, you, like your first one, your A with your your first mortgages only. How how many more? Like people love do private lending, but that always the risk of private lending is well. If you got 100% of your money in one private lend and that deal goes south, well, you know you're you're in some trouble, and then you need to you need to do all that work to to get your money back, uh, foreclosing on the property. So, how many properties would like the uh, the first mortgage position w- w- would that cover? So, uh, essentially, uh, right now our fund is a little bit over 10 million dollars. Okay. In the grand scheme of the the amount of money I manage, it's a small amount of money. Uh, so, out of the 10 million dollars, it's a, it's approximately 10 properties. Okay. that you're spread out. Gotcha. So what that means is in the event of a default of one property, you're not going to see a stop of payment. You may see a reduction in return. Sure. Now, the way we built our fund is we actually have the ability to own physical real estate if we need to. So that allows us to protect and preserve your capital. So in the event that shit hits the fan, I don't know if I can say that. Absolutely. <laughs> in the event that shit hits the fan, we can actually take ownership of the property, preserve your principal. That may mean a reduction in return if one of the mortgages isn't performing, but it allows us to protect your principal until the asset can be sold and ultimately return interest for that at that point. All right, so nice safety net. I love it. And then, uh, what about anything new and exciting uh, at Cal4 Mortgages? What do you? What's the? You're always working on something. What are you working on these days? Yeah. So, so Cap Gap is really our, our future. All right, and our, uh, we have a large portfolio of over 100 million mortgages, 100 million dollars in mortgages. We are looking at moving those direct lending mortgages into the fund. Uh, and then, you know, personally, lots of investments. I'm in the hotel business, apartment buildings, development. So, working on on all of those things and looking at bringing those into a trust type model as well. Very cool. Very exciting. All right. That's a little update from Kyle Ford here at the Multifamily Conference. Take care. Hey, it's Darren Mitchell. We're still at the Multifamily Conference. A lot of people ask me, if you could go back 30 years and talk to a 30-year younger version of you, what would you tell yourself? And uh, so I actually brought the 30-year younger version of me today. Uh, This is my son, Jake Mitchell, works at Control and Compound. He's been working the booth all weekend at the Multifamily Conference. We've had a huge, successful event here. Jake, what are some of the most common questions we're getting people coming up to the booth? A lot of people are curious about the capital gains inclusion, how that affects infinite banking. Uh, we've a lot of questions about that for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, we've had uh, we've had a lot of questions on the capital gains inclusion for those of you following. So now for business owners starting from dollar one, two thirds of your of your gains, capital gains will be included in your income instead of fifty percent. So that's really affecting things. It's gonna it's gonna make it more difficult for people with passive investments. They, you're gonna hit that fifty thousand threshold earlier. Uh, but the great news is this cash value life insurance that we specialize in, we're able to avoid the tax on the growth, avoid the tax when you spend it, avoid the tax when you die. It doesn't affect, it's not affected by the capital gains inclusion because there's no income reported whatsoever. And it doesn't affect your $50,000 passive, uh, passive income grind. So it's great news for the cash value life insurance world. Great news for the control and compound. And uh, thanks for the question, Jake. Thanks, Dad. Yeah, it's uh, it's been great here. I love talking about infinite banking, uh, meeting more, more people. Uh, what's been your highlight so far? Uh, well, I had a couple of highlights. I mean, I met a bunch of cool people so far. I made a lot of connections. Uh, the uh, the presentation I gave on stage yesterday that was uh, that was a big highlight. You always get a kind of a rush, uh, or I get a rush when I uh, present. It's my favorite thing to be up on stage, so I enjoyed that. And uh, uh, hearing Jordan Belfer this morning was pretty cool. Uh, we had a, had a special breakfast with Jordan Belfort, and he uh, he just told some funny stories, but yeah, very entertaining and very successful man. And the second chapter of his life, I really didn't appreciate. You know, everything I knew about him was based upon a movie, and uh, he's had a lot of you know 25 or six years of successful life since that uh, since that episode in his life. So it was really cool to see Jordan Belfort. Thanks. All right, thank you. Hi, it's Darren Mitchell again. Joining me, one of our wealth coaches in Ontario, Connor Eagleson. Connor, how are you doing today, Hey, buddy? good, Darren. How are you doing? Happy to be here. Good. So, Connor, I, I was asking some of the other people, what's the question or the questions you're getting asked the most here at the multifamily? Yeah, uh, there's a bunch, a lot of educated people, which is awesome. One of the big ones, uh, people like to know more about how the loans work and how you can multiply the dollar, have that end asset. Very So it cool. uh, comes up quite a bit. 
Cool. So tell tell us about those loans, uh, these policy loans uh, on these on these uh, cash value life insurance policies. How does a policy loan work and why is everyone so excited about it? Yes, so the cool thing with the policy loan is you can have your cash continuing to compound inside the policy. Death benefit continues to grow. Both of those are completely tax-free and you can borrow up to 90% of your cash value back outside of the policy. So with that, how it works, we call them the holy grail. I think that's your term I'm stealing, but the holy grail of loans because uh, the loan is uncallable. Uh, that collateral is guaranteed to go up each year, so you're not going to get in a scenario where you get a margin call and you have a panic to repay the loan, so that's cool. Uh, you've got a tax deduction on that if you use it for an investment purpose, business, real estate, going to a conference like this, where you, anything you expect to make a return on your investment or your loan proceeds. And then the third piece is unstructured. So I know you love this one. You're always talking about uh, the benefits there. You can repay this when, how, and if you want. So amazing flexibility for someone that's in business or real estate, because if you're going to go take on a project, you can decide You know, if you want to repay it in three months, six months, you want to leave it open for a year, it's really up to you. Uh, so we've got amazing flexibility with the loans. Cash keeps growing, all tax-free. Uh, so that's kind of the the 10,000 foot view, but happy to get into more detail if anyone has more questions beyond that. He said it all. I'm done. Thank you. Hey, everyone. It's Christina Wyatt here at the Multifamily Conference in Toronto. It's been a very exciting day talking a lot to our other uh, companies, other booths, presenters here. And uh, we have lots of different presenters here, different booths with lots of information. And we have Kyle Agro here from Equiton that we're going to have a chat with, find out what he's doing at the Multifamily Conference. So, Kyle, what brings you to the Multifamily Conference? Tell us a bit about um, your business and what you're here to talk about. Yeah, I'm an associate vice president of the capital raise department for Equiton. So all I do is I work with investors to raise capital so that we can essentially keep buying real estate assets. The multifamily conference is great because it's got a lot of exposure. I mean, that's really what we're looking to do is get our name out a little bit more. Um, I find these type of um, conferences are really great for brand recognition as well as meeting people who might be looking for a passive real estate investment, which is what we can offer. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about that. So for passive investors, what does Equiton have to offer? Essentially, you could call us a private REIT. So I emphasize private because we're not listed on a stock exchange, okay? Why that's important is because if you think about public REITs or stocks or mutual funds or ETFs or anything that's traded on a public platform, really, what dictates the price of these is just volume of trading. Meaning if a lot of people are buying it, it goes up. If a lot of people sell it, it goes down. It has nothing to do with the actual financials of the company itself. It's okay. literally just volume of trading. Especially in today's world, things are becoming more speculative than ever. Um, especially with influencers out there like Elon Musk, he'll tweet something and it could push something up or down 20% with, again, no rhyme or reason whatsoever. And what we want to do is we want to give Canadians a safer and more predictable way to invest. And that's the reason why we're private and why we will stay private. We have an apartment fund. We own 34 different buildings that are worth about a billion dollars. And we manage about 2,800 doors within that portfolio. And how we give predictability and stability to our investors is, again, because we're private, meaning we're not listed on a stock exchange. So when you buy something private, you get units of a trust, which is fairly similar to a share. Fairly interchangeable, just on the two different sides of the world, being public and private, okay? When you're on the private side, how we value those units of a trust that you're buying are based off third-party appraisals done on physical real estate assets, and we use the CBRE, probably the most accredited uh, commercial appraiser in the country. Now, we... Of those buildings that I was talking about, we get what's called a hard appraisal. So they actually go out and see the building and do a real appraisal on it once per year on the anniversary date of when we actually bought that building. So because it's only being valued once per year, rather than a thousand times during the course of the day as people are trading um, on the stock exchange, it gives a lot more predictability and stability into that asset. And it gives us time to implement our strategy into these buildings so that we can provide that value for our investors moving into the future. As an example, we've had this uh, um, fund open, I think, 96 months at this point, and we've never had a negative month, let alone a negative year. 
Oh, that's awesome. So little little volatility, which is nice. Very, like very that. low like volatility. Safe, steady, like predictable growth around typical. here, too. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I know REITs, REITs are definitely becoming more popular and people are using them. So you provide a lot of education on and, and provide updates on the projects and whatnot that you're working on and what they're investing in so that they can understand it. Of right? course. And like you can also use registered funds when you do yep. these things. Right? That's huge. Is, yeah, for that's sure. Ter- a lot of like people e- want to hear about that. Even yeah. people who have active real estate portfolios, that means you like real estate as an investment. So it's a way that they can get exposure in the registered accounts like RSPs, TFSAs, RESPs for your kids, Liras even, which is like a pension payout that you might have got from an old job. You could use any of those with these type of assets. Yeah. Sorry, with these type of investments as well. Investments that you have. Super yeah. cool. So if you could give a new real estate investor the best tip, one tip, what would it be? That's a great question. Um, due diligence, I, I would like say. I like that one. I like that one a lot. And building your power team. Yes. Due diligence is huge these days in real estate. For sure. Yeah. I mean, you have to know who you're investing with. Yep. I mean... And that's on you at the end of the day to make sure that you're doing the proper things to make sure that the companies or individuals that you're working with are doing proper things. And again, that's one of the things that I really love about working for Equiton is that we try and go through the scrutiny of being a public company, but give people the advantages that come with private investments. As an example, that apartment fund we were talking about, we have uh, the board of directors is majority independent meaning that any decision that gets pushed through is going to be in our investors' best interest. Number two, again, all of the numbers that you're looking at, you can bank that they're correct because we have third-party companies who are checking off everything. We use the CBRE, as I mentioned, for all of our um, appraisals. We use Grant Thornton to go through our books every single year, which is an accounting firm. And by having other companies check off that we're doing everything, Um, the way we should be doing it, then that should give investors peace of mind moving into the future. Absolutely. And providing it to the investors, which is so important. Yeah. So I love that tip. Um, We've had some great tips here at the Multifamily Conference. I appreciate you stopping by the booth to chat with us. I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks. (laughs) Hey, it's Darren here at the Multifamily Conference. Joining me is Corey McKinnon. Corey's just an amazing guy. He's a coach, he's a speaker, he's an author, uh, and he's CEO of uh, Infinite Results, real estate coaching business. So, Corey, tell me a little bit about your business, and then let's chat about the multifamily conference. Yeah, so, I mean, we help real estate investors either get started or scale their real estate portfolios, and um, it's just something I've been doing as a give back ever since I retired from corporate, like 10 years, actually 10 years, 11 years ago now. So it's been uh, a super fun journey, and I believe that you shouldn't keep all this knowledge inside. It's like... I had a lot of help getting to where I am, so I want to give that back as well, right? I love it. If uh, if you ever uh, get a chance to see Corey and Danielle's um, in-person meetings uh, in Oakville, you're still doing them in Oakville? Doing, the, doing them in Oakville. So every month in Oakville, we're, we might be moving out to the airport just to keep it a little more central. So that's in the GTA for people that aren't as familiar. And uh, we're starting to do master class workshops. We're building a community. Um, all kinds of different things. We also do one-on-one and group coaching too. So Very cool. Yeah. All right. So you've been to this multifamily conference before. What brings you back? What, uh, what, what kind of value did you get out of this by coming here? Oh, for sure. No, we were actually, you know what? My booth was right around here last year. I was maybe just behind you guys here. So um, I think the biggest thing is coming out here, you got to stay relevant, um, up to date and sharp as a tack, right? As Jordan Belfort would say. So he was one of the speakers here this weekend. Um, but I think even just networking, like just it's, Literally, we've had a hard time moving 100 meters here because we keep bumping into people that we know. Uh, that uh, you know, it's kind of like these are friendships that are forged through this very you know challenging uh, asset class sometimes called real estate investing or whatever, right? Especially when the economy is a little bit contracted right now. So, um, yeah, I'm here to just shake hands, show face, um, continue to improve those networking relationships. It's important. Very cool. Last question. So, if people want to learn more about uh, you and what you do, Corey, where uh, where can we direct them online? Yeah, we're pretty easy to find. If you want to find our website where we do all of our uh, collaborations, it's strategicsuccessconsulting.com. And then for my, uh, for us here, I mean, just go look me up. I'm Corey McKinnon everywhere, Instagram, YouTube, all that kind of stuff. So. Very cool. All right, right. Thanks, Corey. No problem. That's it. For, thanks, guys. Cheers. Hey, it's Darren Mitchell with Danielle Chazon, Strategic Success Consulting. Woo! Uh, Danielle, uh, Corey McKinnon's partner, if you saw Corey on here, uh, run amazing programs, uh, education sessions in uh in, uh, in Oakville or GTA area. Uh, Danielle, I know you do a lot of coaching. What would be the one piece of advice you'd give someone, you know, either new or relatively new in the real estate world 
Uh, what do you see people not doing that they need to do to be successful? Well, honestly, Darren, I mean, I'm biased because I'm helping people get that education by coaching them, but ultimately education is key. Yeah. As you know, in order to minimize any risk that you have in real estate, and real estate investing, I mean, you're dealing with big numbers, and if you make a mistake, it's a big mistake. There's no such thing as a really small mistake in real estate, and so education is key, and I, I know I'm biased, and this sounds like I'm just trying to, but I'm telling you guys, you want to educate, you want to invest in yourself, and whether that's partnering with somebody who knows more than you, and working with them and learning from them, or you're investing in a coach, or you're just consuming information through podcasts and YouTube, and, but you need to learn, you need to know what you're doing before you actually start implementing so that that knowledge will help guide you make the right decisions. Fantastic. Okay, last question, Danielle. <laughs> what kind of trends do you see in the real estate investing world now? So, you know, what's the, what, not the, just the hottest, latest, greatest thing, but a trend that you see sticking around that you think is going to be a profitable place for people to investigate? When I first started investing in real estate, it was a very lonely space because people were doing it all on their own. And the trend now is I'm seeing more people collaborate, come together to do bigger and better deals. And part of that is because of the economy and the trends in the economy that's happened because with the interest rates rising and the cash flow dropping, the property prices are dropping. And so what's happened is people are like needing to go into bigger units in order to pencil out or going into more expensive markets. And so in order for the deals to markets or to pencil out. So what's happening is people are really starting to band together. And I think it's a brilliant thing because you got somebody who's really good at underwriting, you got somebody who's a capital partner, you got somebody who's willing to be the boots on the ground and be that that working partner that's going to see and touch the building and maybe if there's a renovation they're overseeing that or they're putting the tenant placement. So when everybody kind of has a lane, well now you're kind of spreading that responsibility and there's less uh, errors that happen and fall through the cracks, right? It doesn't just fall on you. So it's not such a lonely space anymore and it actually helps mitigate the risk. And so that's something that we're helping our students do and kind of push into that direction as well. And it's just, it's working really well. Fantastic. All right, Danielle Chazon live here at the Multifamily Conference. Thanks so much. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Christina Wyatt here from Control and Compound Financial. We are at the Multifamily Conference. It is day two. We are having an awesome time. And I have Victoria Clooney here with me to tell us a little bit about what you do. Thanks so much for chatting today. Thank you for having me, Christina. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Can you tell us a bit about your uh, business and what brings you to the Multifamily Conference? Okay, so my business is Tiny Homes and Ooh. we are building villages. And the difference with us with the Tiny Homes, it's not that we're focusing on one one bespoke model at a time, we're actually manufacturing. And so we have not only designed, but we're manufacturing one of the most sophisticated tiny homes on the market with the goal of expanding across North America. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. There's such a need for that right now. It's actually incredible. We knew that they were in demand. We knew the need was there for attainable living. We had no idea the volume and the speed that we would start to have people coming out of the woodwork about this. It's crazy. Oh, that's amazing. And I heard a little rumor that you might have uh, <laughs> recently been on a pretty famous show, Dra Dragon's Den. That's Can you right. tell us I a was. bit about that? I was. So it just like, again, just like everything that's been happening with the tiny homes, it came fast and furious. I went to uh, what I thought was a meetup for investors, turned out to be a Dragon's Den audition. And as I was signing in, they're like, oh, are you auditioning today? And I said, well, when's the next one? Maybe I'll think about it for the next one. And they said, no, this is it for season 19 across Canada. And I said, okay, let's do it. And so I had about three hours to put together a pitch. I went in, I pitched it. Producers loved it. We got a really good feeling. And then we got the call about two weeks later. And then we were on the show another two weeks so can you tell us what happened? I am sworn to secrecy. I might have to kill you. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, well, we don't want that. And was Rob, I, I know Robert's coming on soon at he the conference. Is. Was he there? He for was your... not there. Oh, no. okay. So he was not one of the dragons. But I did put that connection together, and I thought that it was fate. I was like, oh, my goodness. So Robert's going to be there, the show. But... Uh, He's not. I might have to still get his autograph and maybe, like, see if I can make some type of connection. But Well, you've definitely got an in. About I, have an yeah. in. <laughs> I have an in. I have an in. So it's, uh, it's super exciting. And, you know, just the experience alone was incredible. Oh, that's amazing. So I've got a question for you. Fire I've been away. asking everybody. I'd like to get your number one tip for a new real estate investor. I mean, I hate to say it, but it's, it's the take action is the number one tip. 
you can do as much education as you want. You can spend all the money, but if you don't do anything with it, then you're not going to have anything to show. And so I started in real estate very young. I was 20 years old. It wasn't in, in, it was not intentional when I started, but the difference is that I just took action and I just took one step at a time and I figured it out. Could I have gone faster? Absolutely. Could I have gone bigger? Yes. But the important part was that I just even did it and got started. And that is really the number one tip. You just have to take action. Yeah, Darren always says, a fire aim ready. Fire so, aim ready. <laughs> that sounds... So uh, can you let our listeners know where to find you, where to learn more about the tiny homes? So I'm on pretty much any social media channel that you can um, think of. TikTok is a big one for me when it comes to tiny homes and business, as well as Instagram and uh, Victoria Clooney. Sounds like the actor, but it's spelled C-L-U-N-E-Y. And it's me on the other end. So I talk to everybody that reaches out that isn't like cold pitching me. But yeah, if anybody has questions, they want to reach out, they want to talk tiny homes. We also have a website. It's humblecreek.ca. Okay. Perfect. And then make sure that we watch for the Dragon's Den episode, obviously. September. September. That's awesome. right. Thanks so much for coming Thank on today, Victoria. Me. Hey everybody, Christina Wyatt here from Control and Compound. We are at the Multifamily Conference having a great time on day two and I'm excited because we have one of the speakers um, able to talk to us for a bit. Uh, thanks for joining us, Brad. Can you tell us a bit about uh, your business, you and your talk here at Multifamily? Yeah, wow. Well, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. And I do two things. I buy and invest in multifamily buildings in the United States. I've been doing it for 22 years. And I've accumulated a portfolio uh, as a general partner in a syndication model on over 10,000 units in the USA. But I started, um, I never thought I'd be in this business. I have uh, two degrees. I did everything right. I went to college, got a job, got fired, got another job, got laid off, found myself unsure about my future, didn't know what to do. Actually thought about getting a third degree. And then I read a book that changed the trajectory of my life, trajectory of my life, and that was Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad yeah. book. And I was like, oh my God, I gotta be like on the right side of that cash flow quadrant. And I've been an employee my whole life. And so I sought out real estate investing education. I started going to seminars and workshops. I hired a mentor. I, w I hired this, bought this five figure mentorship program. I, you know, was very skeptical, but it worked. And I went out and bought uh, 62 units and I was able to quit my job in three years. And then I went from there and um, bought over 10,000 units. And then over a decade ago, I started teaching other people because that's how I started. And I never forgot how I felt being like skeptical about real estate educational seminars, right? And, um, and so I love teaching and transferring what I've done to other people. And I've helped hundreds and hundreds of people get into the multifamily investing business. That's amazing. And, and um, specifically in the U.S., that's a very hot topic yes, in, in the Canada US, right now. Yeah. yeah. Well, last year I came to the same event and I was like, hey, like, how are Canadians going to feel if I come in and talk about investing in the U.S.? But you know what? It was very well received because, look, I teach a system about how to select the right market. And one of them is landlord and business friendly. And compared to not only Canada, but also many areas in the U.S., like California and New York or whatever, it makes a lot of sense to invest in states that are a little bit more, you know, business friendly, like Texas, Florida, Arizona, Colorado. So that message really resonated with Canadians. And as a result, um, a lot of Canadians are now working with me in, in my educational platform, investing in the U.S. I love that. Our first thing we always say, the number one investment is in you. So uh, putting absolutely. the time into your education yeah. and learning about real estate and all those things. So if you could give a brand new real estate investor uh, the best tip, the best tip that you could provide, what would it be? Well, you already hit that first one is like, and I'll just reiterate it though. But, you know, and some people say the opposite, by the way, they're like, oh, don't waste money in, in conferences or masterminds and mentorships. Like you could put 30K into a property, but it's like, yeah, but then you have a better chance of losing that money if you don't know what you're doing. And, and on a bigger scale with like large multifamily buildings like what I do, we're buying, you know, five, 10, 15, 20, $50 million properties, sometimes with other people's money. You don't wanna make a mistake. No. You know, you wanna collapse the time it takes to be successful and you wanna avoid pitfalls. And the best way to do that is the first investment is to invest in yourself, which ultimately means invest in 
a program or a mentorship or some sort of resource that enables you to leverage other people's experience, right? We talk about OPM, other people's money. But what about OPT, other people's time, and OPE, other people's experience? Those are also ways to leverage things, but everyone talks about OPM, but nobody talks about OPT or OPE. I love that, OPE and OPT. I'm yeah. gonna use that, I'm gonna steal that. If yeah, that's well okay. you can yeah. steal it, because I didn't create it myself, I yeah. borrowed it. What I've also learned is there's, there's very few ideas that are completely original. Like everybody stood on the shoulders of somebody else when they started. Absolutely. We call it rip off and duplicate around right. yeah, here. That's yeah, that's another right? way to say yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I love um, it. Can you tell our I'm gonna, listeners? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rip, rip off and duplicate that. That one too? Yeah. <laughs> can you tell our listeners where they can find you if they want to learn more about the program, what you're offering? Yeah. So look, um, my website is bradsumrock.com and there's no C. So it's B-R-A-D-S-U-M-R-O-K. And it's the same handle for LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. And I also found out that there's a lot of uh, fake accounts under my name. So look for the uh, ones with the blue check and, and all that stuff. Amazing. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for sharing with us. I appreciate yeah. you stopping by the booth. I love it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank all you. Right. Hey, it's Darren. I'm back here with Katie Lemire. She's the director of operations of this whole shoot and match, this multifamily conference. So, Katie, I got to ask you, I think I know the answer to this because <laughs> I, I see the smiles on everyone's faces. Was this weekend a success? This weekend was a massive success, and I can compare it to last year. Last year was phenomenal. It was, don't get me wrong, but this year is on a whole nother level because they're branching a little bit away from multifamily. We're doing other kind of investments. We have uh, conversations about tax strategies. We're talking about infinite banking and all the awesome things that investors can do to create more generational wealth. So this year, solid success. Love it. Okay, so the big question everyone wants to know, we again pretty good, pretty sure we know, is the event going to happen again next year? Obviously. Yay. Every year. All right. That's it. Katie Lemire from uh, the Multifamily Conference. Make sure if you're not here this year, check it out next year. All right. Darren and Christina, exhausted, excited, and happy at the same time. We're at the end of the Multifamily Conference. We're just packing up the booth here to hit the road. 100% we'll be back next year. Christina, are we going to make it or what? Oh, we're definitely going to be we're definitely going to be back. It's been an amazing weekend. I met so many great people. I can't wait for next year, but I'm also, you know, I can't wait to get home and have a little rest too. It's been a wild couple days. <laughs> All right, I'll see you at the office first thing in the morning. Sounds good.